All right, hello guys. How's it going in today's video? We're going to be taking a little bit of an extended look towards the month of October, where I think things could be really cold overall for the most part during the month of October. We're going to be presenting all of the evidence of that within this video. <music> Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this fall time will overall go down as colder than normal or warmer than no normal? Keep in mind that September 1st is the beginning of meteorological fall, so we're already 18 days into it, but September 1st through December 1st, do you think we will be colder than normal overall looking back or warmer than normal? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. We are going to be talking a little bit about September as well. Starting out now, 6 to 10 day probability outlook here from the National uh, weather service or the CPC to be more uh, exact here. We can see colder than normal conditions for the eastern United States expected according to them and warm in the west. That's our positive PNA. We were just talking about this yesterday and they updated this uh, forecast just 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 recently. They actually updated this yesterday after I made my video and then the 8 to 14 day outlook as well here. They have cold in the east, warm in the west as well. So this goes all the way from the 23rd to the 1st of October on the two outlooks as far as 6 to 14 days. We can try to get that as best as possible here uh, from the 6 to 10 and then the 8 to 14. But basically, from now to the end of October, they expect colder than normal conditions in the east for the most part. Let's take a look at our CFS model here, and we've been using this one a lot here. You can see warmer than normal conditions expected from the 18th through the 23rd, which is today through Thursday of next week. So overall, that Cool down is not coming yet. We can see cold in the west as well. That is a negative PNA, which does not allow for that cold air to make its way east yet. But that pattern flip is expected. Here's overall the past 20 days, by the way. So you can see mostly warmer throughout a lot of the United States, except for the immediate west coast, and then a lot of the southeast and Gulf states as well have dealt with some of those colder than normal conditions. Outside of that, it has been a warm September so far, so far for the most part. I almost said so fall. It is so fall, you know? It is fall. Anyway, here we go. Five-day outlook again. Five to ten day uh, outlook here, which is, again, on the five-day outlook, but just the next five-day period here, according to our CFS model again. So this is the 23rd through the 28th. We can see this pattern beginning to flip here. This looks a lot like, like my September forecast, actually. Cold in more of the central United States, warm in the northeast, and then warm out west as well. This is kind of a transitionary pattern, uh, and this is why we're transitioning. Here's our PNA forecast here, uh, which is, again, in its negative phase, it is colder than normal along the west coast. In its positive phase, it's warmer than normal along the west coast. So that is the difference here, and that is what kind of tilts this PNA, whether it goes negative or positive. You can see that flip is expected around the 21st. Always with these teleconnections, we give it a couple of days lag, by the way, because once this moves in, it does not allow for the full pattern to set in for a couple of days. It takes a little while, but once that does occur, uh, we do end up seeing usually in a positive PNA, colder than normal conditions in the eastern United States. And you can see this one extends all the way through the 3rd of October with a positive PNA. Uh, but here is this European weekly model. And as you can see, all the way through November 1st, which is on the very right-hand side of your screen, this one has a very positive PNA, especially on the control there, which is the blue line. You can see this one goes very, very far positive towards the end of the model run there. So for the most part, October is expected to be in a majority overall positive PNA according to the European model. NAO, which in its negative phase brings colder than normal conditions in the east, stays negative from about the first all the way through about the 25th or 6th here according to this model on the control, but overall around neutral or negative here. Same story with our Arctic Oscillation, which in its negative phase allows colder than normal conditions to move down from the Arctic regions into the United States. This is kind of like a booster to the colder than normal conditions that are already there. Once this is negative, it allows for Arctic air to make its way into those cooldowns, making them Arctic blasts more than just cooldowns in general. So a lot more potent uh, once we see uh, this P or sorry this AO go negative, and it is expected again, just like the NAO, to be a majority negative during the month of October. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on and continue to take a look at our CFS model on a five-day increment uh, through the month of October. Uh, all the way towards the end of October. All right, now here we are taking a look at 
the 27th of September through the 2nd of October. And as you can see, this pattern has fully flipped by this point, bringing colder than normal conditions for the eastern half of the United States and warmer than normal conditions here for the western half of the United States. And as we move towards the 1st of October through the 6th of October, so this is like the true October, first five days or six days or so, uh, we can see, again, cold in the east, warm in the west. That seems to be the pattern, at least for the beginning of October. Now, things get even colder as we move through the 6th through the 11th here, as you can see, uh, especially warmer there in the northwestern third of the country. Uh, we see a little bit of colder air making its way into California, Nevada, the four corner states as well. But overall, much colder for the eastern half of the country. And this is when that AO would be negative, and you can see it's become a lot more potent. We went from just light blues, which would be about 1 to 7 degrees below what, you're, what is normal in Fahrenheit, to these greens, which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal. So a significant jump here to even way below normal temperatures here in the month of October. For reference, let's say you have 10 degrees below normal here. Let's say you're in the green somewhere. Uh, let's say you're in like Washington, D.C., for instance, is just an area I can point out here, or New York City, or Philadelphia. All of those areas are in this uh, kind of green area there in the northeast there. Uh, if you're 10 degrees below normal, let's say your average temperature is 75, well, you're going to be at 65 for the highs if you're at 10 degrees below normal. So that is a significant difference because 75 is pretty warm uh, or, or pleasant, I would say, and then 65 is when you start to actually, you know, feel that chill in the air. So that is a big difference, actually, on the way it affects our body when we feel that air. Um, so, yeah, pretty big jump there. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on, and we're going to move on through the 11th through the 16th of October, and then the 16th through the 21st. Uh, and then we're actually going to take a look at our European Weekly model, which is a separate model, and see what that one has to say as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at the 11th through the 16th of October. And as you can see, there's still some greens, especially over uh, New York City there, and then even some of the South Central United States. But it's become a little less potent by this point, the 11th through the 16th. This is the mid portion of October. Um, this model does have multiple members, so this might be due to some disagreement, but uh, I think overall the AO is going to be the most negative right at the beginning of that negative AO pattern. Eventually, as we move to the 16th through the 21st, we do see a bit of a warm-up on this model and a backtrack back to a negative PNA pattern. As you can see, some colder than normal conditions set up over the west coast of the United States. That's what pushes that warm air out east. So we see another pattern flip back in the other direction, kind of back to what we're at now way later in the month of October. It's important to note that we will not be dealing with the same temperatures even in a similar pattern a month from now, which it literally is a month from now when this model is expecting it, because your average temperature is so much lower, probably about 10 degrees lower. So what is now causing about 80 to 85 degree temperatures in late mid to late October would be causing 70 to 75 degrees, so about a 10 degree difference. So it won't be quite as bad if we saw a warmer than normal condition later in the month of October, obviously. Just important to kind of note there. Now, our European weekly model actually agrees for the most part in a little bit of a different way. This is the 4th through the 11th of October. It has warmer than normal conditions for the east, kind of colder out west in the north central United States a little bit there. But by the time we move to the 25th through the the 25th of October, that is through the 1st of November, this model says that is when we will see a massive cool down at the very end of the month. So regardless, both of these models have very cold time periods within the month of October, and actually both are trending towards a majority of the month being below normal, which overall would make it where we look back at the month of October as a colder month overall on paper once we look at the average temperatures. Because if you have about 17 degrees, I mean 17 days of below normal temperatures and then about 13 days of above normal temperatures, usually unless it's much more potent on the warmer than normal side, you will be seeing a colder than normal month overall. It's never going to be cold the entire month. Well, I should never say never, but uh, usually that is not the case. Usually it's just a majority of the month is below normal and some of the month is above normal. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're actually at a surprisingly high four out of six. And the reason for this is we have a lot of teleconnection support and multiple models on board, which tells me this is a little bit higher probability than typical. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think this October is going to go? Very fitting for today's video. And James Marr, who I've been trying to pick other people for a while now, but I decided to pick James Marr today because I feel so bad. I haven't picked you in so long. But James Marr said, I believe it will start out cooler. Then we will enter a warmer period, then flip back to a cooler weather during the later part of the month. And that's a little bit more like what the European weekly model is calling for, but definitely a valid uh, prediction there 
for the most part. We do have some support for that type of a scenario as well. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bennett, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lil the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stennett, Cindy Klein, Mark J. Luke Fuego, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this very exciting Patreon, Patron End Screen of the Day, Patreon, Patron End Screen of the Day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1, Cat Bite, Steven Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. If you'd like to join that one, it'll be next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.